Oh, I'm, uh, this is Glenn Langston. I'm an astronomer at the, the uh, U.S. National Science Foundation. And I am right now showing you a picture, of, uh, a view of the Milky Way in, uh, by digital signal processing. And I hope, I want to show you that you can actually do this for yourself and discover the Milky Way in your own backyard. I um, am actually showing you some data coming from a, a radio telescope that's about 100 yards away, and I have some pictures of it. So here is me in the, on a beautiful day with a, a radio telescope, which is basically a giant funnel. Um, this part here is six inches wide, and this thing is altogether about four feet tall. Um, and it's gathering up signals from the Milky Way. When it's observing, um, it's pointed up at the sky, and uh, the signals come in and, and wander around into a computer which is living underneath here. So what we're looking at now is actually a, a, every one of these yellow changing plots is a, is a plot of, it's actually a frequency in uh, megahertz um, and versus intensity that it's seeing. And most of the signal is due to an amplifier um, in the, in the, in the uh, telescope. But the Milky Way is quite clearly visible as these little lumps and bumps. And I'm going to show you how we can zoom in on those and we can calibrate these, this intensity, which is in raw sort of computer counts, and make sense of it and discover arms of spiral arms of the Milky Way. Now, um, so in order to, um, to actually make sense of these numbers, we actually need to take a, compare them to something else. And we can we actually quite easily compare them by comparing them to the ground. And so earlier, before I started this video, I had pointed the telescope down. It's looking at dirt. And the dirt has a very definite temperature of about, um, about minus, well, plus, plus 60 or 70 uh, Fahrenheit, which corresponds to about 290 uh, Kelvin, which is sort of the astronomical unit for this. Now, the, that's what we're calling is hot because the sky is much hotter. So I just turned on the hot spectrum, which I recorded earlier. So it's pre-recorded about a half an hour ago. And you'll see that uh, when I zoom in with this tool, again, this is a GNU radio tool that's built uh, sort of enabled by a wonderful group of uh, software hackers who like to put uh, put uh, make software available to everybody and particularly in software defined radio so now the milky way is way down here at these weaker intensities and again most of the signal from here to here is all due to uh, the amplifier we use and the milky way is just a little blip on top of it but the ground is much 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 hotter so it is um, about, as I said, 200 Kelvin. So the, the effective temperature of the uh, amplifier is half of that. And the, the Milky Way or the empty sky is extremely cold, um, about 3 Kelvin, which is minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, because we've actually done the, I've already saved these uh, uh, calibration, we can actually use them to fit the spectrum in a astronomical unit, which is called Kelvins. And this is um, what we see. So again, the latest spectra are showing up here, are sort of being a little distracting from, and I'll turn that off. And now we see at a certain frequency, peaks that are otherwise different than the perfectly quiet rest of the, of the sky radio background. Again, this is 1420 um, to, well, 1420.4 megahertz corresponds to this peak of a little, hydrogen atom out floating out in space in the Milky Way, but there's a gazillion of them making it almost shouting at us where they're so abundant. And I can actually also subtract a, flit, a fit from this, which I do with software. And this is showing what the, um, that average is. And now I'm going to also change units. Now with a thing called the Doppler shift, we can actually measure how fast different part, these different hydrogen atoms are moving, at least on average. And I'll zoom in. And again, this was just taken a very short amount of time, um, a few minutes of, well, maybe a half hour of observing time now. And at zero velocity, which is all relative to us, we are seeing a lot of gas because it's all close by. But here, you are now discovering at minus uh, 
50 kilometers a second or so, which means it's moving at us at a speed of 50 kilometers a second, which is remarkably fast, way faster than the speed of a bullet. And there's actually hints of another spiral arm. So you're with these plots, you're seeing the Milky Way spiral arm showing up in our local emission pier. Now it turns out that I can also turn on, to show you the sensitivity of this little telescope, I'll turn on a five second average. So this is showing <laughs> that, uh, 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 that uh, we don't need this. And uh, this is showing that every five seconds you can easily see the Milky Way with this little telescope because each one of these cyan colored curves is only a five second average. And um, so there you go. That's what the Milky Way looks like as far as di discovering the spiral arms. Now this, this screen is has lots of information that you need to provide. You need to know which direction you're pointing. Zero is north. Um, <clears throat> now 65 degrees is sort of up, which is where I was. This is the center frequency of this plot, and the bandwidth is, in, is a six megahertz, which is uh, uh, fairly wide for, a, for an incredibly inexpensive AirSpy mini um, software-defined radio device. That whole telescope that I showed you, um, now pointing up, is about a... Um, including the computer, which I forgot to show you, is about a $400 purchase. So th this is a Raspberry Pi 400 computer that's, that's running right now. It's actually, it's all tucked in there at the moment, but this is what it looked like uh, before. And the, uh, this little cable here goes to its first very sensitive amplifier, which is from GPIO Labs. And it's what makes this, this, sense, this telescope sensitive enough to work. And it's about $50 too, and all the other bits and pieces. This is a, a basically a protractor with holes so I can set the telescope at different elevations. And it sits on an arm. And again, you can take this apart and carry it around and put it in your classroom and go to a, a fair because you can actually easily battery power this. Um, bring this back up. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll go out. I just want to show you a few features of the... Well, I'll actually stop now and say thank you for listening to this. I hope you understand, you feel like you could possibly build your own science aficionado radio telescope and uh, discover the Milky Way. Thank you.